Good morning, friends. Happy Friday. Today is Friday, May 8th, um, and welcome to Read Aloud. Just a reminder for everybody, remember that next week is our round two of Spirit Week. Um, it's going to be rainbow themed, so each day you're going to wear a different color of the rainbow. So starting on Monday, you, uh, you wear either red or pink, and then Tuesday, orange or yellow. Wednesday is green, Thursday is blue, and Friday is purple, and that's next week. So get pumped for that, and we want to see all your pictures. All right, so just like we start every video, I'm going to show you where to find this um, uh, materials for today. Always oh, skipped forward a little bit. All right, you go to the distance learning materials folder, go to first grade, then we go to read aloud. And we go to May 4th to May 8th because that is um, this week. Got to make sure that these are all in the right order. We go to Friday, May 8th because that is today. And then you have your materials right here. So you'll have the article that we're going to read as well as the work that we're going to do. All right. So this article is going to look a little different today. Um, we're just going to show you a variety of articles to get you used to seeing a bunch of different things. So right now, I'm going to flip through this article, and the first question isn't about the genre of the article, but it's about the text features. Um, so see if you can identify some text features, and then from that, see if you can figure out the genre of the article. I'm going to flip through it, and then we'll go over it together. Go ahead. All right, so there are actually only two text features in this article, which is a lot different from the other articles that we've read, because usually there are a ton and they're hard to keep track of, but this time there are only two. We've got our title right here. Our title is Communicating with Our Hands, and this right here is a diagram. This gives us more information uh, to help us understand what's going on in the article. So the two text features that we have are titles, don't even have any headings it's just one title um, and this diagram right here so those are the two text features that should be written down and we know that um, the article is nonfiction because those two text features are found in nonfiction texts all right now we're going to read the entire article it's only about three pages um, so we're going to read the whole article, and then we're going to go over the um, rest of the questions on that sheet. So let's get started. Communicating with our hands. We use our hands to communicate in many ways. The thumbs up sign is a, um, is a well-known indication of approval. People cross their fingers to wish for luck. Let's see. Can you see that? Cross their fingers to wish for luck. A wave of the hand can be a gesture that means hello, and you wave hello to everybody. Um, many people make an O with their thumb and their second finger to show that everything is okay. While riding a bike, people use hand signals to communicate that they are going to turn left, turn right, or stop. Police officers wave traffic on or hold their hands up to direct motorists to stop. In classrooms, you guys know this, children often raise their hand for permission to speak. At concerts and large events, people clap their hands to show appreciation for a performance. People who water ski clasp both hands over their head, so like this, to show that they are not injured after a fall. These are a lot of different hand signals that people use. Some people use sign language, a system of hand gestures, facial expressions, and body language as their primary form of communication. People who are deaf, not able to hear, communicate through a system of sign language. 
Like different verbal languages are spoken around the world, different sign languages are used in various locations. Each of these sign languages has been developed to facilitate communication and education of people who are deaf. It has become common for parents to teach signs to young children. Babies can actually imitate and use signs before they can speak clearly. So that's pretty cool. This helps parents figure out what a child is in need of before the child is able to communicate his or her needs verbally. So some babies sign with their hands before they can actually speak. Just as people study additional spoken languages, an increasing number of people are choosing to study sign language in their free time. In the process of earning badges, Boy Scouts are challenged to learn a series of signs and to communicate messages in a nonverbal fashion. Nonverbal means that you're not using uh, your voice to speak. Each year, thousands of people learn sign language so they can more easily, easily communicate with friends or family members who are deaf. Job seekers find that many companies are looking for workers who can communicate through sign language. Many people learn sign language simply because they find it interesting and enjoy the challenge of learning a new skill. Sign language is growing in usage every day. All right, so that's the whole article. Now, this article is a little bit more challenging because it uses some uh, harder words that we might not have been introduced to yet. Um, so as we go over the questions, I'll point out the harder words um, so that we know what they mean. All right, so the next question is, what is the main topic of this article? We just read through the whole article, um, and now it's your job to think about what was this article about? I'll flip through the pages, and you guys can try and figure it out. What was this article about? What's the main topic? Go ahead. All right, so when we're thinking about the main topic, we're thinking about what this article is about. What is it teaching us about? Um, so the first part of the article tells us different ways that we can communicate with our hands. We can use hand gestures to say that we're good, we're okay, um, say hello, we can say that we're hoping for something, cross our fingers. Um, and then you guys, when you're in school, you raise your hands to tell us that you're, you want, you have something to say. Um, and I know that a lot of us also use like the me too symbol when we agree with somebody, or we use the disagree symbol when we disagree with somebody. So that's all about communicating with our hands. And then we'd start with talking about sign language. Now, sign language we can see here is a system of hand gestures, facial expressions, and body language. So in addition to talking with your hands or using your hands to communicate, you're also using your facial expressions. So like smiles or frowns or when you're angry or, or sad um, and body language. So body language is like if you're confident, you're standing up straight and tall. Um, if you're sad and kind of like um, not confident, shy um that's the word shy you're kind of like trying to make yourself smaller so you're all hunched over um all of these ways that we move our bodies and our hands and our faces are ways that we communicate with other people so some people can only do that um because they only use sign language um so that's another way to communicate um and then we learn that parents teach young children how to sign with their hands. Um, and 
different people who are learning sign language because for a variety of different reasons, for a number of different reasons. So this article is actually all about what the title says, communicating with our hands. Um, there are ways that we communicate with our hands, even though it's not sign language. Um, and then it goes into more about sign language, which is primarily communicating with your hands. So the main topic of this article is the title, it's communicating with our hands. All right, so the next question is, what does the word deaf mean? I think a lot of us know the answer to this because of a book that we read um, in science when we were still in school. But it's also relevant, or it has to do with what we're reading now. Um, so let's see, we've got to find the word deaf. Now, deaf is, there are no bolded words in this article, so we need to look really closely to figure out um, where that word deaf is, because when we find it, we'll probably figure out what it means. Um, so deaf is right here. The word deaf is right here. So we're going to read the text around it to see if we can figure out what the word deaf means. So I'll start up here and we'll read this whole paragraph. Some people use sign language, a system of hand gestures, facial expressions, and body language as their primary form of communication. People who are deaf, not able to hear, communicate through a system of sign language. Like different verbal languages are spoken around the world, different sign languages are used in various locations. Each of these sign languages has been developed to facilitate communication and education of people who are deaf. So, the first time we see the word deaf is right here. And usually, when there's a section of the sentence that is separated by what's called commas, uh, this piece, uh, this type of punctuation right here, um, when you see a comma right after a word that you don't know, um, or might seem like an important word for the article, you'll likely find the definition or what the word means right here. So, people who are deaf, not able to hear, communicate through a system of sign language. So, what does the word deaf mean? Deaf means not able to hear. So, when you're deaf, you're not able to use your um, sense of hearing. You're not able to hear. All right, now the next question is one of those multiple choice questions. So I'm going to exit out of this so we can use our trusty uh, marker tool right here. So before we use that fun tool, we're going to read what the question is. Why do some people decide to learn sign language? A, they think it looks cool. B, they find it interesting. C, they want to learn to talk with their feet. Or D, they enjoy the challenge of learning a new skill. So this question is asking why some people decide to learn sign language. And there was a whole section of this article that was about why people want to learn sign language. And that's on this last page right here. So let's read through this paragraph to see if we can figure out the answer or answers, because there might be more than one, to that question. Just as people study additional spoken languages, an increasing number of people are choosing to study sign language in their free time. In the process of earning badges, Boy Scouts are challenged to learn a series of signs and to communicate messages in a nonverbal fashion. Each year, thousands of people learn sign language so that they can more easily communicate with friends or family members who are deaf. Job seekers find that many companies are looking for workers who can communicate through sign language. Many people learn sign language simply because they find it interesting and enjoy the challenge of learning a new skill. Sign language is growing in usage every day. That means more and more people are using sign language every day. So let's go back to our options. Why do some people decide to learn sign language? They think it looks cool. Now this may be true, but when we were reading this paragraph, that was not mentioned in the paragraph. So remember when we're Figuring out answers to multiple choice questions, 
The choice needs to be found in the article. It can't be what you think. It needs to be something that's found in the article or in the text. So because that answer cannot be found in the text, we're going to cross it out because we know that that is not one of the answers. So cross that out right there. Now, next one, they find it interesting. I think I remember them saying that uh, that was one of the reasons in this uh, paragraph. Let's see if we can find it. Hmm. Oh, here it is. Many people learn sign language simply because they find it interesting. So if we can underline that or make little brackets around it, we know that that is definitely one of the correct choices. So we're going to go back here, and we're going to circle it. They find it interesting. That is one reason why some people decide to learn sign language. They just find it interesting, and they want to learn more about it. All right, so the next option or choice, yep, option or choice, is they want to learn to talk with their feet. Now, when we think about what sign language is, we, got it. we have to go back to the definition of sign language, which can be found over here. Just like when you see um, commas after a word that you might not know, you can find the definition. The same thing happens with what's called a parenthesis. So these are parentheses. These little uh, like smiley face things. They're, they're parentheses. So what's in these parentheses is actually going to tell you what sign language is. So sign language is a system of hand gestures, facial expressions, and body language. So nowhere in here does it say that people talk with their feet when they're using sign language. So we're going to cross that one out because if they wanted to learn to talk with their feet, they would not be learning sign language. All right, now the last one. They enjoy the challenge of learning a new skill. Now, I think we saw that somewhere back near this bracket. Ah, here we go. Many people learn sign language simply because they find it interesting and enjoy the challenge of learning a new skill. So it was in the same sentence as the other correct choice. So we know that that one is true as well. We're going to circle it. They enjoy the challenge of learning a new skill. So the correct answers for this question are B and D. They find it interesting, and they enjoy the challenge of learning a new skill. All right, now we're going to present. Yes. All right, next question. True or false? Some parents decide to teach their babies to use sign language. All right, so this question is asking if that statement was true or false. If parents actually do teach their babies to use sign language. So this paragraph is about people teaching themselves how to use sign language. Um, this paragraph right here is about parents teaching sign language to young children. So let's reread this paragraph to see um, whether that statement is true or false. It has become common for parents to teach signs to young children. Babies can actually imitate and use signs before they can speak clearly. This helps parents figure out what a child is in need of before the child is able to communicate his or her needs verbally. Now, so the statement is, some parents decide to teach their babies to use sign language. Um, this first sentence right here actually gives us the, uh, the answer or support as to whether that statement is true or false. It has become common for parents to teach signs to young children. So is this true or false? It is true because babies are young children. There's just another word for them. We got babies and we got young children. And then we see the next sentence, babies can actually imitate and use signs before they can speak clearly. So it would make sense for parents to teach their baby sign language so that they can figure out what the baby wants before the baby can actually speak. So true or false, some parents decide to teach their babies to use sign language. That is true 
because the article says it has become common for parents to teach signs to young children and that babies can imitate and use signs before they can speak clearly. So that answer is true because parents decide to teach their young children or babies sign language because babies can imitate and use signs before they can speak clearly. All right, my friends, now it is time to move on to the exit ticket. So here we go. The exit ticket today says, in this article, we learned about many different hand signals and how they are used to communicate. What are four different hand signals we learned about and what do they mean? Bonus, can you think of, other hand, of another hand signal that was not in the article? Remember to use complete sentences. So we're going to go back to the very first page because this page talks about hand signals that are not sign language. So this, remember, this question is not asking you about sign language. It's asking about the different hand signals that we, we use to communicate that are not sign language. Um, so the question is asking, what are four different hand signals we learned about and what do they mean? One example of this is right here. The thumbs up sign is a well-known indication of approval. So thumbs up means that you're doing a good job. That's one hand signal and what it means. You're going to find four examples of hand signals um, and then explain what they mean. If you think of another one that is not in the article, you can add that on so that you have five examples of hand signals. Remember, you're using complete sentences and your very neatest handwriting. All right, my friends, have a great rest of your day and an awesome weekend, and I will see you next week for Rainbow Week. Bye, friends.